Ezekiel chapter 40. And if you ever want to say that Stiley said he knows it all, thinks he knows the whole Bible. Ezekiel 40, now on, will show to you, I don't know the whole Bible. What we're going to look at now, we got to think about the context of what's happened. Jerusalem and the temple has been destroyed by the Babylonian army and the Chaldeans. Because the sins and iniquity of Judah and violating what God told them to do, they did not do. And violating what God told them not to do, they did. Adam, do not eat of the tree of the, of the knowledge of good and evil. He ate it. Today, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And they don't. Throughout the history of man, one side is God and the other side is man. So with the temple destroyed, Ezekiel is going to tell the Jews of a temple that's not there. And we're going to fly over the temple of Nehemiah. We're going to look to the temple after the seven years of tribulation in the millennial kingdom where Jesus Christ will be King of Kings and Lord of Lords upon David's throne that when Jesus wakes up in the morning and looks and sees the temple and the priests and the functions thereof as David will be there the prince as Solomon will be there the twelve apostles of the Lamb the elders of the house of Israel Abraham Isaac and Jacob and the 12 tribes, the Levites doing the service, they know who they are. And the other authority of in the land are those Christians that earn the right to reign in a city. And Christians and Jews and the people, the nations who helped the Jews during the tribulation period that didn't even know they were helping the Jews have that right in the millennial kingdom there was a there was a, a temple and the temple rites and the temple service under the antichrist but the abomination that lay desolate when he when they pop open the, the, the temple and in the holy of holies is the antichrist We are going to look at this millennial temple and it's far better than Nehemiah's temple. It is far better than the temple that Jesus sat and taught. It is far better than the, the temple made by Solomon. And the Bible says that there is been copied from the temple that's in heaven. It says Ezekiel 40 verse 1. <clears throat> pretty much we're going to read and maybe through you can say hey I got through Ezekiel 40 I got through Ezekiel 41 Stiley read it to me hey at least you got through it there's nothing wrong with the Bible on CD or cassette tape or whatever you get MP3 if that's how you read the Bible through a year Make sure it's the King James Bible. Don't read the Devil's Bible. In the 5 and 25th year of our captivity. So it's been 25 years. They've been carried over into Babylon. In the beginning of the year, the first few months, just started. 
the Jewish time, not Rome, as we are in now, in the tenth day of the month, the fourteenth year after the city was smitten. So it's been twenty-five years. They've been in, there were three different captivities. It has been 14 years the temple in Jerusalem has been destroyed. They're going to be in Babylon for 70 years. Don't associate this with Nehemiah's temple. The city was smitten, in Jerusalem. In the selfsame day the hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me hither. Here goes Ezekiel again. He's some kind of rapture. You know, as I read this, I was thinking about how, you know, the devil knows the Bible. You know, the devil has the nerve to quote the scriptures to Jesus and rebuke. Matthew 4, I think, 4, Mark 4, was it? You know, the devil knows what we're reading. I'll give you the TV experience of what we learned in Ezekiel so far. Ezekiel's going from here to there to there to here. Beat me up, Scotty. Scotty, four to be month. Where do they get that? Where do they get they're on planet whatever and they're in the starship? And they want to go to the asteroid and they go in that room and they go they're on the asteroid. They stole it out of Ezekiel. You want an interesting thing? I don't know the guy saved. I, I can't just, but I, I, personally, I say no. You want to know how much the devil knows about the Bible? I gotta be careful with the statement I'm gonna break here. But how much the devil knows about the Bible? Read or listen to or watch the movies of Stephen King. I'm, I, I, I listen to books on tape and I'm doing Stephen King's Long Delirious. A lot better than the movie. There's a lot of Bible in there. Three quarters of the people on this plane disappeared. The only thing the devil did, they, they left their dentures, their, their pacemaker. They didn't leave their clothes. They didn't leave their blood. But uh, a rapture? I believe through the work of Satan... Satan reveals how much Bible he knows, and the children of the corn all name Bible names. Interesting. So we got not a rapture, but we got a godly transport. <laughs> in the visions of God brought me into the land of Israel. He's in Babylon. Not anymore. Imagine if this is this is what's going to happen in millennia. Pew! It's going to happen in New Jerusalem, in New Earth, in New Heaven. You know the New Heavens. Man, we're going to be on a book. We're going to go fast. We won't have cars. And set me upon a very high hill, mountain. Excuse me. By which was the frame of the city on the south. I don't know the geography of Israel, but then again, the millennium geography will not be the geography that's today. The whole entire earth is broken down and redone that Jerusalem is the highest elevation in the millennium. He brought me thither. And behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass. That's what Jesus looks like in uh, Revelation chapter 1. With a line of flax in his hand and a measuring reed. Now, the, the, well, with John, he has a measuring reed. He has John the resurrection. Uh, a line of flax. It's a cloth. And a measuring reed. That's a, a rod. You know, you know those tape measures that people use when they're sewing? That's what that is. And he stood in the gate. And the man said unto me, I wonder who this man was. 
Son of man, behold with thy eyes, hear with thy ears, and set thy heart upon all that I shall show thee. For to the intent, this is why this is all going to happen now, that I might show them unto thee, art thou brought hither. Declare all thou seest to the house of Israel. So this is not a church age. This is not the Gentiles. Behold a wall on the outside of the house. The house would be, I believe, the temple. Around about. So here's the house, and around the house is a wall. Probably make Donald Trump happy if he ends up in heaven or not. I don't know. In the man's hand a measuring reed of six cubits long. Now a cubic is from your elbow to your outstretched pointer finger. And it changed. <laughs> Because usually th that cubit was the cubic of the ruler of the king. They weren't the same. Six cubits long by the cubit and a hand's breadth. So cubic, elbow to the finger, and then whatever hand's breadth is. So he measured the breadth of the building, one reed, and the height, one reed. Then came he to the gate which looketh toward the east. Now, I don't understand. I don't know if you're in the gate, you're looking east, or the gate, the gate that's on the east side. I, I don't understand that. And went up the stairs thereof. Uh oh, stairs. And measured the threshold of the gate, which was one reed broad. And the other threshold the gate which was one reed broad and every little chamber every room every room was one reed long one reed broad and between the little chambers were five cubits so the the chambers are one by one and there's about five cubits in between the chambers and the threshold of the gate by the porch, here's a porch of the gate, was one reed. And he measured also the porch of the gate within one reed. So the gate has a porch. Then measured me, he, excuse me, he, the porch of the gate, eight cubits, and the post thereof, two cubits. And the porch of the gate was inward. So the porch was on the inside of the wall towards the city. House. The little chambers, and I could be wrong. When I get there, I'm going to see this. The little chambers of the gate eastward, that's on the eastern side, were three on this side, three on that side, and there were three on, of one measure, it means they were the same measure, and the post that will hold things up had one measure on, on this, this side and on that side. So that side, this side. He measured the breadth of the entry of the gate. This is how much room you got. Ten cubits, and the length of the gate, thirteen cubits. 13 by 10. This space also before the little chambers was one cubit on this side. And the space one cubit on that side. And the little chambers were six cubits on one side. And the six cubits on that side. So, so far the rooms and all that, they're, they're the same to the same. He measured then the gate. From the roof of one little chamber, so the chambers had roofs, to the roof of another, so from roof to roof, the breadth was five and twenty cubics, door against door. He made also 
posts, 13 cubits, even unto the posts of the court round about the gate. And from the face of the gate of the entrance unto the face of the porch of the inner gate were 50 cubits. And there were narrow windows, windows that were narrow. A lot of the old time churches had those narrow windows. Libraries had that, that narrow window. And little to little chambers. And to the posts. Wherein the gate round about. And likewise to the arches. It's a half circle top. And the windows were round about inward. And upon each post were palm trees. Not like we don't see enough palm trees in Florida. We're going to see them in this building. Then brought me he. Then brought he me into the inner outer court. And lo. Now remember Ezekiel is a priest. Lo there were chambers, rooms. And a pavement. That's on the ground. Made for the court round about. Thirty chambers were upon the pavement. So it was a paved kind of stone ground. And the pavement by the side of the gate over against the length of the gates was a lower pavement. Then he measured the breadth from the forefront of the lower gate to the forefront of the inner court within a hundred cubits eastward northward. As of right now, I wish there would have been a map that would show up to say, you are here. But, architect would understand this. I'm reading, trying to make out what I can, what I can, and what I can't. I'm just reading. The Lord will show me. Not, I'll see it. And the little chambers of were three on this side, and three on that side. And the posts thereof and the arches thereof were after the measure of the first gate. This is the gate. The length thereof was 50 cubits and the breadth 5 and 20 cubits. And the windows and the arches and the palm trees were after the measure of the gate that looketh toward the east. And they went up unto its seven steps. And the arches thereof were before them. And the gate of the inner court was over against the gate toward the north. Toward the east. And he measured from gate to gate a hundred cubits. After he brought me toward the south. And behold a gate towards the south. And he measured the posts thereof and the arches thereof according to these measures. And there were windows in it, and the arches round about, like those windows. And the length was fifty cubits, and the breadth five and twenty cubits. And there were seven steps to go up to it. And the arches there were before them. And it had a palm tree. There's the palm trees again on this side. And another on that side, upon the post thereof. We're going to stop right there.